Miss Beth with Wow Wednesday in Madison 4-H. And today we are going to have a social studies lesson on voting. Yes, that's right. It is time. It's that time of year where it's voting season. And I want to explain to you very in simple, simple, very simple terms what it's all about and how it works. First of all, you have to be 18 years old to vote. And voting is a right and a privilege that each of, of us as citizens of the United States have. Unless you've gotten into trouble with the law and you lose that privilege. So don't ever do that. But voting is your way, is my way, of getting my voice out. Letting my voice be heard. Okay? So I get to be a part of choosing who I want to represent me in any political office, okay? From what we have this coming up uh, election season, we have President of the United States, we have U.S. Congress, we have state senators and representatives up for election, we have in the city, in the county of Madison, we have, this one's big, we have the property appraiser, we have the tax collector, we have the superintendent of schools, we have the um, supervisor of elections, we have three county commission seats and two uh, school board seats and the sheriff. So it's a huge election for our county. So it's very important that everybody in Madison County gets out and votes, okay? Uh, the Supervisor of Elections Office has made it really easy for you to do that. Um, you can go to in early voting. If you're not going to be here on that uh, in town on that day, uh, you can go to a polling place. That's where you go to vote. It's called a polling place. You can go there and vote early. So there's no excuses, okay? No excuse not to vote. But like I said, it's a right and a privilege um, and everybody should do it, okay? Now, our government is a democratic government, and it's basically divided into two parties or two belief systems. Now, there are more parties, but they're smaller, okay? And these are not birthday parties or whatever other kind of party. These are called political parties. And each political party is made up of people who believe the same way. So, for example, in this case, we have the Democratic Party and we have the Republican Party. Basically, most of the Democrats believe this way. And the Republican Party, most of those Republicans believe in this thing. Okay? So, they believe that the government should be run in different ways. However, we're still Americans. Okay? So, we've got this big umbrella of Americans. Then you got some people that believe this way, we got people that believe this way, some that believe this way, all right? So, now, we have basically two elections coming up, okay? It's all for the final. The first part of our election process is called primaries, okay? And the primary election will be on August the 18th. And what happens on that day is you go to the polls. If you are a registered Democrat, so when you register to vote when you turn 18, you have to decide, okay, am I going to be a Democrat? Am I going to be Republican? Or am I going to be independent? You have to decide, okay? And if you're a registered Democrat, then on the primary day, August 18th, you can only vote for the Democratic uh, candidates. All right, you'll get a ballot that only has <clears throat> the Democratic candidates. So what you're doing, this group is deciding who to send to this next election. Who do they like the best? Who's going to do the best job? Okay. So the Democrats, they go, everybody goes the same day on August 18th. And if I'm a Democrat, I'm going to get a Democratic ballot. If I'm a Republican, registered Republican, then I'm going to get a Republican ballot, all right, on August 18th. So August 18th comes around, everybody goes to the voting polls, 
and they cast their ballot. And that's what it's called, casting your ballot. And on this day, Pig gets 10 votes from Republicans. And the Dem and I'm sorry, the Democrats. And Kitty Cat only gets two votes. Kitty Cat's kind of lazy. She likes to sit around. So this um, winner of the Democratic primary was Pig. So Pig will now go to the general election on November the 3rd. Cat, she's going to go back to chasing rats. Now, on August 18th, the Republicans also are voting, and our candidate dog and candidate cow. Candidate dog got seven votes, while candidate cow got 11 votes. So, cow is now moving on to the general election, all right? So what we've had here is the Democrats have decided who they're gonna to send to the general election, and the Republicans have decided who they're gonna to send to the general election. So now we have the next step in our process is the general election on November the 3rd. And on November the 3rd, we will decide who will be our barn president, okay? Will it be pig or will it be cow? So November the 3rd comes around and there's only one ballot. It has pig and cow on it. It doesn't matter if they're Democrat or Republican because in the general election, Democrats can vote for a Republican and Republicans vote for Democrats. It doesn't matter, okay? Now in the primary, you can all, Democrats can only vote for Democrats, Republicans for Republicans. Now, everybody decides, everybody gets the choice. Now, who is this gonna be? Who's gonna be our next barn president? Well, November 3rd comes around and they vote. And Cal gets 20 votes and Pig only gets 10. So as the general election is over, the one with the most votes will now be our barn president, which will be Cal. Cal will be a very good barn president. She's a good leader. Uh, she works hard. And so that, my friends, is basically how an election works. So if your parents are thinking about not voting, tell them to go vote. It's important. Everybody's voice should be heard. Congratulations, Cal, on becoming our barn president. Hey, my name is Tommy Hardy. I'm the supervisor of elections of Madison County. And it's an honor and a privilege for y'all to be with us today. I want to thank Miss Beth for bringing y'all in into our office, into our world. Today, we're um, testing all the equipment. We do probably five different tests through the whole system throughout before an election. But what I want to talk to y'all about today is, is getting out to vote. Um, I want y'all, I want to challenge y'all to go with your parents to vote. And so what we've done and, and been doing is, is we have a ballot for kids. You can pick your favorite sport, you can pick your uh, favorite color, ice cream and different things on it. So you go to the polling place like your parents and they get checked in and you get checked in and they get their ballot and you get your ballot. And you'll walk over to a booth that looks like this and you'll take a pen and you'll fill in the, the oval, the one that you want, just like you do on the test. Once you get done with that, you'll fold it up and you'll drop it in the, the ballot box, just like your parents would. The difference is, is your parents come over to a machine that looks like this and they feed the ballot in this way. But again, I, I wanna challenge y'all to come and be a part of this process because of, if one person doesn't, feels like their vote doesn't count, then what if 100,000 people felt that same way? And so you, you miss out. Another thing I want to challenge y'all on or talk to y'all about is most people pick people that look like them, dress like them, go to the same church or, or do whatever the same way. But if you take that approach, 
what if that person wants school year round and you don't feel like that you need school year round? So what I want to challenge you and your parents is, is don't vote for people just because they look like you or live on the same street. Vote for people that think like you do. Do your research, sit down with your parents and, and talk about who, what the candidates, candidates are and their names and what they stand for and what they don't. Again, I want to thank y'all for tuning in to the Miss Beth show, but I want to talk a little bit about security and safety at the, uh, at the polling places. We want everybody to feel safe with the virus going on and everything in the world. So on the, the virus side, we got several things here and we got other things that are already uh, in boxes where we can't break them down. But we got a fogger where we're gonna fog every so often to, to clear out the air. We also got hand sanitizer, we got gloves, we got Clorox wipes, we got masks. And this little machine here is supposed to clean out everything in the air. It's got five filters and it does ozone. So it, what happens is, is it sucks the air in um, and then blows it out through these filters. And I thought that was a pretty cool little deal. But what we want is we want every single person to feel safe when they come to the polling place. Um, and feel that, that, that we're taking pride. Another thing that we're doing is, is if you walk in the door, we're giving you one, we're giving you a pin. You keep that pin all the way through. We're gonna have people spaced out. Um, we're gonna limit the amount of room and different people that can come in. Um, and so I just wanted, I want, wanted to tell you all those things because we are taking precaution because we want everybody to feel secure and safe. Thank you. So let's give a big shout out to Miss Beth for all she does. Y'all make sure y'all thank her. Last thing I'm, I want to talk to y'all about is early voting. Early voting starts in Madison County Monday. Typically, we're doing 12 days this year instead of seven days. And so we'll start Monday. Mondays through Friday will run, what, what's the times on that, Frida? What's Monday it? through Fridays? Oh, eight to six. Eight to six. I was seeing that she was paying attention. And on the weekends, it's seven to three and then we'll run all the way to the following Saturday. And so I challenge you to get out and vote. The four early voting sites is the back of our office. That's gonna be new this year. We've added a huge room so people can feel safer with the virus. Uh, Pineetta Fire Department, Lee City Hall, and Greenville Senior Citizens. We'll see you there.